Firstly, I would like to wish everyone a happy holiday season and the very best in the year ahead. I'm making this video in order to bring to the public's attention the ongoing intimidation and torture I am experiencing since I began speaking out against corruption locally and nationally with detailed statements on the bank bailout to the president, outlining how patently obvious it was we were being misled by the government and how we were about to be inundated with debt, along with a published letter in the Sunday Business Post to the unusual and highly suspicious events of the Loud County Council elections in 2009, which I reported to the Guardi asking them to investigate for election rigging, among other things. The risk to my life and liberty has been brought home to me recently when my white van was followed on a journey into Dublin by another white van that parked on the side of the Ashbourne Road as I filled up and took photos of me as I exited the station and continued to follow me into Dublin. In addition, my cat recently died under very suspicious circumstances just three weeks before Christmas while I was away on a two-day trip. As I write, a fourth major leak has occurred on the property which resulted from a connection to the radiator being loosened and required a number of turns to tighten back up. This is in keeping with attacks which occurred at the same time last year. Please refer to my earlier video post on my Facebook page for further background information on what has taken place. These events have been ongoing since I first stood for election in 2009 on a platform of reform and transparency in the wake of the economic crash with a view to a united federal republic and have intensified over the past four years. They began in 2009 with my house telephone becoming inaudible due to a wire that was, that was placed across the telephone wires in the telephone socket at my door to items disappearing from my house. I had a telephone engineer in my home to fix the problem, as well as a Garda to report a theft. They have continued to this day 13 years later. Clearly, this is not the work of one individual on a mission, but the work of an organization with the resources to dedicate continuous time and effort without falter. No one person would dedicate so much of their time continuously for 13 years. Based on my experience and various events which have occurred, I have concluded the digital attacks have been carried out by an organisation empowered to monitor all internet and mobile phone usage, with the ability to manipulate data which is being communicated across the net, should they choose to do so, both here in Ireland and in the European Union. They are also empowered to eavesdrop on mobile phone communications, interfere with email and social media such as Facebook, Messenger, bypass house alarms, interfere in banking transactions via disruption to web traffic, disrupt postal services and financial affairs, and essentially wreak havoc in any area of our lives should they choose to do so. To illustrate why I believe this to be so, I will give one simple example. At the time I was experiencing significant interference on my iPhone and Chromebook, I also experienced the same issues on trips to Spain. This is all documented and sent to Angarang Giacona. More recently, over the past two years, I was unable to use my iPad in Ireland as part of an ongoing campaign of interference. After reinstalling the operating system several times, it would work temporarily, but quickly my apps would be blocked again. It was also blocked when using it on other broadband networks in my hometown. As an experiment, I took it on a recent five day trip to Norway, which is outside the EU. I had none of those problems. This led me to believe once a device is identified by its digital signature anywhere on the net, both in Ireland and the EU, it can be tapped into and manipulated. Norway is not a member of Europol. In addition, in tandem with local criminal elements in the community, an individual can be terrorised and threatened if they pose a threat to the status quo. This includes death threats and, if all else fails, attempts at seduction into illegal activity in an attempt to entrap or compromise the individual. 
Those involved have done all in their power to prevent me from investigating or uncovering the perpetrators of these acts. They have been involved in seeking to drive me out of my home, to prevent me from living in the community of my birth, or to enter public life, and among other things, actively worked in 2018 to prevent me from purchasing my family home after my mother's passing. In earlier reports, I documented how these incidents began in force on Sunday the 27th of December 2018, when a group of men who put me in mind of plainclothes law enforcement i have been in contact with before spoke to me. They made it clear to me in a theatrical way that they had an interest in me and one which I later realised was cynical and denigrating. They obviously wanted me to know it was they who were behind the coming storm. The following day, a grey Ford Mondeo car was rammed at my gate, and when I gave the registration number to the guard on call in Drogheda, his, temp- his temperament changed as he demanded to know who I was, as if I were some kind of criminal trying to wind him up. Recently, I made a report to my local guard station relating to interference in my business, my computers, my mobile phone devices, and the recent death of my cat three, three weeks before Christmas under very suspicious circumstances, which left me quite unnerved and upset. My complaint did not include the most recent water leak due to an unscrewed pipe, which happened about a week later. I kept my complaint as simple as possible and requested that Pulse IDs be issued, which they were. Since my last report in August 21, which covered hundreds of incidents over the previous three years, including one sit-down face-to-face death threat, vandalism to my property, including three major water leaks, one of which required a ceiling to be replaced, building paint defacement, mobile phone interference, digital and financial interference, etc. According to a Freedom of Information request made to Angarda Shirkona, there have been no incidents logged apart from a stolen piece of property for insurance purposes, which was a formality or investigations carried out whatsoever, despite ongoing guard communications and interview and promises promises to investigate after supplying supplemental information. In the meantime, there has been a change of guard and those related to my earlier attempts at resolution appear to have left the station. On this occasion, the response I got from the guard on duty after consultation with his local sergeant was, it is not possible to investigate the digital instance without taking your computer away, and with the backlog, it could take two to five years before you get your computer back. Given that the incidents are happening over the internet and mobile phone communications, this response makes little sense. It seems the ordinary citizen can have their broadband and mobile communications monitored and interfered with, and there is no agency in the state that they can turn to for help. I've since reported the fourth leak and have come away with the realization there is very little on Gary Shikona can or will do for me, as their response is simply to look for fingerprints, which I have no doubt they will not find. The other mode of investigation is CCTV, and in the past mine has been erased. So making my report, I was not hopeful. But I did want to raise awareness given that my freedom of information requests show a very different picture of my situation, as if nothing were taking place. The guard himself had no knowledge of my previous reports and stated he himself had been in the station 14 years. It was this last encounter with the guardie which left me with the realisation that on Garda Shikona, I'm afraid to say, are unable to see the wood for the trees. They operate on a simple policy of one complaint, one investigation. There is no thinking which joins the dots together and recognises there is a serious problem which amounts to attempted murder, as many individuals would not be able to withstand the attacks I am being subjected to, nor would they have the resources to resist them. They do not carry out wider investigations. They simply carry on and ignore all that has happened. On this occasion, I brought the matter to the guard's attention some weeks after the event. I created a document of all four leaks and the response I got was, what do you expect me to do given so much time has passed? It was a very good question, 
and explains why these con incidents continue without fear on the part of the perpetrators, as they understand the system and why nothing has been done in four years, despite incidents covering every area of daily life. There is a serious problem in law enforcement that paves the way for terrorists to intimidate the population whenever it suits their purposes, as there is no other word to describe what is happening. It surprises me after decades of conflict, conflict in Northern Ireland, we have not adapted to these realities. That is why I believe the Gardaí have seen all of this before, but choose to not get involved. The 1993 interception of Postal Packets and Telecommunications Messages Act gives Gardaí or the Defence Forces the power to tap phones and listen to phone calls, open and read letters before they arrive to their recipient, and potentially read emails after the Garda Commissioner or Chief of Staff of the Defence Forces applies for permission from the Justice Minister. Meanwhile, the 2009 Criminal Justice Surveillance Act gives Gardaí, the Defence Forces and Revenue the power to secretly record with audio and video devices break into your home to implant a device and again to remove it, secretly putting a tracking device on your vehicle and follow your movements without permission from a district court judge with the approval of a superior officer within each agency. In other words, one can be secretly bugged, wiretapped, recorded and have your internet use monitored under the 1993 and 2009 Acts and there is no one to turn to. One can assume this power extends to social media via spyware and other such surveillance techniques. This is in line with what is happening to me. To help put this into context, I believe it can, it can help to understand the mentality of the institution that is on Garda Shir Corner. I was fortunate enough to have a chance encounter with a young man who left the service a while back disillusioned. He explained to me that Gardaí are leaving in droves, and the reasons he explained had to do with a lack of transparency, openness and accountability. He also pointed out that if you brought a complaint against another member, while you might be vindicated, chances are you would be sidelined for promotion or moved to another area. While you might succeed in your complaint, it seems priority is given to those who have your back, while moving on or sidelining anyone who stands in their way. It's this culture of secrecy, back scratching and unaccountability, which can easily be exploited by members who seek to act outside the law and interfere in citizens' civil liberties. It's clear to me this operation must be taking place with the knowledge of senior Gardaí, given the attention it has received with letters to politicians, letters to the Minister of Justice and the Gardaí themselves not to mention posts on Facebook. How then can it be that the campaign has continued relentlessly with ongoing attacks on my livelihood and, and personal life? Unless it is a state-sponsored operation, the best case scenario is they are simply too afraid to get involved due to a culture of silence in the Gardaí and are turning a blind eye. In the worst case scenario, it is simply a matter of course that certain Gardaí from around the country can tap into high-level resources within law enforcement to target private citizens without fear of blowback of any kind, as they are protected by a code of silence within the force. And the fear of reprisals should anyone stand in their way. In this scenario, to tackle these individuals within the force is basically a recipe to end your career. According to Mike Wallace in 2016, the Gardaí are a law unto themselves. This I do believe to be true. I believe the manner in which law enforcement operates within a culture of secrecy and unaccountability, penalising those who report what is happening, has led to a laissez-faire attitude of invincibility, which in turn means the powers of the 1993 and 2009 Acts can be abused towards criminal ends, and I am at the receiving end of such abuse. I therefore believe these incidents could not occur without the help of, law, of members of law enforcement. The question is, do they operate at their own discretion or are they acting at the service of the state? The people behind these tacks are following a well-trodden path. 
designed to delegitimize threats and undermine the livelihood of those same threats. On my Twitter account, Twitter handle Albert Byrne, I have detailed 13 sets of dirty tricks I have identified that have been used against me over the past four years to intimidate and torture me and are still in use. There clearly is a playbook being followed and those responsible have done this many times before. The perpetrators have years of experience in operating outside the law, while at the same time using all the resources at the disposal of law enforcement, including access to every institution in the country. It's not possible on Garda Shia Corner have not seen this before. They must know what is going on. In 2017, former Chief Justice John Murray submitted his findings that the state is operating a system of data retention that amounts to mass surveillance of the entire population. His report is a damning indictment of the Department of Justice for allowing a range of surveillance practices to develop that are in clear breach of European law. It is clear to me that the culture in Angarda Shirkona encourages violations of human rights. And like the tail wagging the dog, is responsible for government policy which undermines civil liberties in Irish society. In order to clarify what is taking place, I call on the Taoiseach to confirm or deny the existence of a unit within law enforcement, empowered to act outside the law, which works in conjunction with local criminal elements, with the objective of eliminating individuals from Irish society deemed undesirable by members of law enforcement and or the government. The public need reassurance individuals are not being targeted by the state or by third parties who have infiltrated the state apparatus, exploiting state resources, as there clearly is no way to find recourse. As things stand, nothing is going to change, as the local guardie, by their own admission, are not equipped to handle the situation. Given what I now understand about the guardie, I'm fully in agreement. I therefore call on the Taoiseach to set up an independent investigation into how it is possible these incidents in all areas of my life can continue unchecked for the past four years, despite numerous communications with government officials and the Gardaí, and how blatant digital interference can continue daily without any help whatsoever from law enforcement, despite numerous notifications. Based on this investigation, fundamental reforms are needed to protect individuals from such acts of terrorism and the, ma and the manner in which Gardaí respond, as they are clearly not equipped to deal with acts of terrorism in our communities. The public need reassurance our civil rights are protected on the present system of law enforcement, as that does not appear to be the case. Thank you for listening to my message.